They did. They did Hefe. Now they got Alamo. Uh, this sounds. Pre- this song's pretty cool. So, it just came out, and we really wanted to do a remake of it um, here at Excellent Sound. Um, we really wanted to see if we could try to remake this drop, and then if we could do it, we can show you guys. And we did it. I think we did a pretty damn good job. Parker's here, hanging. What's up, guys? Ian's in the back. Dance moves. Boom. Shout out to Kenny G. In charge of AV, Kenny there he G. is, kicking it as per usual. Uh, yeah, so we're here at Excellent Sound. I'm Danny. I don't know if I introduced myself or not. 
Um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you guys what we made. We're going to show you some processes we went along as far as like trying to get it to sound like the song. Uh, I like doing this a lot because I find that it's really good practice. When I do this um, and I just try to remake somebody's uh, song or whatever or sound, uh, I usually try to do all of, like if it's just the drop sound, I try to make all their drums, I try to make everything I can, find samples as close as I can and then manipulate them to be what I want it to be. Um, because I find that it helps me in my production uh, be able to choose better samples and also some just like use, getting creative to try to, to to create, uh, you know, to, to make these types of sounds that you wouldn't normally do in your normal production. So uh, we're going to go ahead and play you our version of it, and then we're going to get right into the synth. And uh, we're going to offer it uh, in a link to download if you don't want to make it. We spent a long time making it, um, and we're going to go over it, and we're going to take our time. And we're two weeks or something, right? Two, two, two weeks. weeks. Take it. Two weeks. Yeah. Song came out two days away. Two days ago, it took us two weeks to make it. Yeah. So let's hear our version. With I took some bits and pieces. I'll show you. I'm not cheating. I took their little. This is the first drop. That's that first sound. We took this little thing here. Uh, and then this little cool little. What's up? The D and B. Yeah, the, the D and B. We're gonna maybe make these sounds too. We'll do that another day, but those really sounds fun. are really easy and fun to make. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's hear our version. We made the kind of lead drop synth, and we're gonna show you how to do it. And then also I'm gonna show you how to, uh, I fa I'm pretty sure this is their 808. It sounds just like it. I don't know, tell me if I'm wrong. But here we go. This is from the build-in. <laughs> cool right yeah there's some like weird pitching stuff going on um, I had to get really creative with some of the pitch uh, bending and serum automating some of it but most of it's in the synth now what I, I've said this before too but a lot a lot of times what these guys do is they'll just make crazy sounds and they'll record it to audio and then they'll be you know then they'll take all those sounds and they'll they'll put it in as audio and then chop it up and create phrasing out of it I tried really hard just to keep it with just the MIDI with the pitching, so um, it's it's not perfect, but it's it's pretty damn close. I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's open up Serum. I got a MIDI track right here. The pitch bend is going to. Uh, I'm probably going to copy this automation to it. We'll get into that. Um, what's this guy? Actually, let's get rid of him. Oh wait, nothing's on him. Cool, he's ready to go. Cool, I got serum right here, so pull out your serum if you're following along at home or if you want to watch it later or whatever. Um, Just move serum that way so we can this way? see it. Yeah. yeah, there we go. I think that helps, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we'll put it in the center screen. We like we have a little bit of OCD. Um, I think I lost my serum, so that's great. There it is. All right, cool. Oh, uh, there's a wavetable that we went ahead and made. It's called Excellent Saw. It's kind of a cool uh, wavetable that you can, you're going to need, if, if you're going to do this sound, you need to download it. Um, you can do it with a saw wave, but it's not going to sound exactly the same. We spent like an hour trying to figure that out. So uh, we went ahead and exported it. Uh, so I'm going to drag it in right now. I have it right here. Look, it says right here, excellent saw right there. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it like this. And I'm going to drag it right over here. And I'm going to use the import just normal dynamic pitch zero snap. Cool. There's our saw. Um, it's a pretty good saw. I'm going to start using it on some other stuff too, I think. So let's take our MIDI. I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this guy. And I'm going to put him right here. You can see. There he is. So I'm going to mute this guy for right now. <laughs> So sick, dude. So sick. <laughs> so sick. That's Sara. That's Sara. All right, cool. So the first thing we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna bump this guy up two octaves. So let's do that. Put him up to two octaves. Um, and then what we're going to do is the warp mode we're gonna be using is sync, and it disappeared. <laughs> It 
didn't like the way I imported it. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. Serum was being a little fun right there. And you're going to put sync probably right around here. We'll say that like, looks like, uh, what is that? 1.26, we'll say, for sure. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make LFO 1. We're going to put them like this all the way over. And you're going to pull this guy down just a little bit. So if you go on LFO 1, um, you're, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set it to triplets and set it on to, let's see, envelope or trigger. We'll do envelope. Okay. So we're going to set it on envelope. And you're going to put this guy on the fine tune. Uh, it's going to give you this. So just go ahead and hit shift, alt, click. Bam, it's gonna pull you up just the one way. We're gonna pull it all the way down to 100%. Let's hear what it's sounding like so far. It's kinda of getting that, that kind of glidey thing. Um, another thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our pitch bend range and we're gonna put it up to six and minus six. This is for the, the pitching that I did. Uh, you can do whatever you want. So if you wanna like make it interesting or whatever, you feel free to go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so we're going to set LFO1 uh, needs to be on uh, triplet halves right there. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. Half trips? Half trips. Half trips it is. All right, cool. So that's looking good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a filter. This is really the, the, the biggest part of the sound. I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit because it might get a little loud. Um, this guy, uh, go ahead and miscellaneous and use a reverb filter. This is how you make a lot of those uh, Boombox Cartel seems to love this filter. They use it all the time. Make sure it's turned on. And you're going to turn the cutoff to like 16 hertz or so. Let's try there. It's kind of quiet, but the trick is you turn the resonance up, and this is where you get some crazy, crazy craziness. It's kind of quiet, so I'll turn it up for you guys right now. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and put on mono and legato. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to build LFO2. And LFO2 is going to look a little something like this. You're going to put it on triplet mode, and you're also going to put this guy on trigger and set it to one half uh, triplets, just like the other one. And move this guy over, and you're going to bend this guy up so it's kind of doing this. Now, we're just going to leave that for right now. We're going to come back to it when we go back to the matrix. Uh, we're going to build our LFO 3. Uh, we don't really need it, so I just pulled it down. I don't know why I did it, but I decided to. Uh, okay, so LFO 4 is going to be also in triplet grid, uh, and it's going to be set to envelope this time. Um, and set this guy to also one half triplet. This guy, um, you could just give him just a little bit of a bend right there. Um, and let's go ahead and let's go and go into our effects right now. Let's start messing. Well, let's see. Well, I haven't done anything yet, so we'll just start messing with our effects. Let's make this thing sound wide and big. So let's open up our effects real quick. Go ahead and put up a hyper dimension. Um, I liked, I kind of was playing around with this a little earlier. So what I did was I turned it all the way up because I really wanted it wide. Uh, use it your discretion, whatever you want. Um, turn the size down. Um, let's turn the size, uh, sorry, up. We'll put it up to like, 86% and we'll turn the mix up to like mm, we'll say 67 let's see how wide that's sounding it's, I, I feel like this I mean that sounds like a violin but I feel like this this sound is like it's like a bagpipe or something it's a really Irish. cool sound yeah yeah so but it's it's really you really got to play with it to get really um, an interesting you know, an interesting phrase or whatever. So uh, next thing we did is we put distortion on and we went and put the uh, drive all the way up to right there and turn the mix down just a little bit. Um, cool, that should add some grit. Let's listen to it real quick. It sounds like a, like a, like a, like a possessed violin or something. All right. I so, like it. Yeah. Satanic violin. All right, now we're gonna add reverb. Let's go ahead and put the plate on. Uh, let's turn the size down just a little bit, and then let's turn the mix where it is. Leave it and turn the width all the way up, um, and turn the high cut to about halfway. So we should get some some more size out of this guy. Let's hear what it sounds like. Oh yeah. It's starting to come together right now. Oh yeah. We still got a lot more to do though. 
Um, okay, next is multiband compressor. Open up that reverb, turn that gain all the way up to about right there, we'll say. No, let's do it back like this here. So that's at 17.3 if you want to follow on exactly. Now we're clipping, so now I can turn this guy down. really what brings it together I mean yeah the, the multi-band is the multi-band is really what's gonna bring out that reverb to make that sound kind of it's it's uh it's tonality or it's texture um makes it sound really tight um also too with here the reverb filter is doing just a ton of stuff uh I find that that this filter is, is super uh it's really fun and, and it's really useful if you want to get some creative sounds out of it um Try messing with the cutoff. You can automate it sometimes. Like I'll even show you right now. We can even go like. So you can get some weird pitching stuff. Um, and just bounce it to audio and start playing around. That's so dope. All right, let's start. Let's start. Um, let's start assigning some of these LFOs. Let's, we need to get interesting on these pitches. So let's go over to our matrix really quick. Uh, and let's go ahead and take LFO2, and what we're going to do with LFO2 is we're going to assign it to uh, the course pitch of oscillator 1. So LFO2 right here. I like, to, sometimes you could just throw it on right there if you want to do it, but this is the way that I decided to, to do it this time because it just made more sense, um, as I'm at least explaining it. Um, so we want LFO2 to be messing with oscillator's course pitch. Um, and the way that I had this set was at minus three, I believe. Um, also, too, this is important. So this is the shift alt. Um, this is going to make it actually go forward as, a co as opposed to going back and forth. So we want this one for uh, LFO2 to be going straight forward, just like this. That's kind of doing like, that's kind of giving it that kind of draggy sound. I think I might even, let's pull this up just a little bit. There, I like the way that's sounding a little bit better. Cool. Uh, we'll come back to LFO2 if we need it. LFO3 we're not really using today, so let's go on to LFO4. LFO4 is going to be on... Oh, no. Actually, LFO4 we had on the master tune. And we were like, why isn't it sounding good? I'll show you. So don't do this. Just side note. Don't do this. But we were, like, messing with it. And we are like, why is this not sounding right? It was like... <laughs> It was getting cool sounds. We're like, wait, I don't get it. It wasn't working. But the reason why it wasn't working uh, before is because this volume tab was down. I don't know how that happened. What happened? There? Yeah, but whatever. So we're not going to use uh, LFO four for the master tune. What we're going to use is, I believe, actually, let's put LFO four. I'm going to just assign LFO four so I can get a new LFO five. <laughs> uh, so LFO five is going to also be affecting the course pitch of oscillator one doing the same thing the shape that we're going to do is very similar we're going to set this guy to trigger uh, i'm sorry no envelope and it's going to be set at triplet grid and one half cool let's go ahead and take this guy and take him down to minus three lfo5 is also going to be doing like i said oscillator the course pitch and we're just going to pull them down just a little bit. So let's hear what that's sounding. Really weird. Let's hear it in comparison. So you can hear right there that it, this is the difference that we need. At this point, I think we're pretty much done with the sound. Um, what we need to do now is we need to process it and make it sound big and wide so it sounds like the other one. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do was I, we need to get the pitch bend right. So I kind of hear, you can kind of hear it in the beginning. Parker caught this because he's got a good ear and I just, I couldn't figure it out for a reason. It was just, it's pitching down. Like if you listen to theirs, it's like, oh wait, that's not their drop. So it's like, Let's see, if that's there, then that means their drop is... What's this? Oh yeah, here we go. It's going... 
And for some reason, I couldn't figure it out. So I got the course pitch to do what I wanted to. Um, I could probably use the master tune, but for this, I'm going to uh, just use the pitch bend in Serum just to get it exactly what I want. And this, I just kind of used my ear and tuned it. Um, that kind of helped out a lot. Shout out to Tassio. Is it Tassios? Dude at Cybatics. Obviously, shout out to Kermode because he's the homie. The homie. The homie. But, but uh, Tassio, uh, I, I, I've said this before in another one, but I don't know why this changed my life. In Ableton, the most annoying thing ever is that if I take like this clip right here, I'm not getting a little side distracted, but whatever. I'm just going to explain it because I feel like it. Let's say I take this clip and I open up envelope and I mess with the pitch bend. What happens is, is sometimes it gets stuck and it's it's terrible. I hate when that happens. I know, right? <laughs> it's like the worst. And it gets stuck and then you're trying to listen back and then you have to like go back and like delete an anchor point and make a new one. But anyway, I don't use that. Tassio showed me the way uh, in one of his cool videos. Um, and what he does is he opens up this disclosure tab right here uh, and he hits configure and he just touches uh, the pitch bend knob. Just like this, you can do that with anything in Serum. Also, if you just touch it a lot of times, it'll just bring it up for Ableton because Ableton's so smart. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add like a new automation lane, and that's our pitch bend now. And since I matched it with this one, it should be exactly the same. So I'm just gonna take this guy, and I'm gonna copy what I did earlier. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and copy it, and I'm gonna paste him down right here. So hopefully, it gets a little bit more. <laughs> So yeah, it's down there. It's just not as, as thick as the other one. We need to borrow this guy too. Let's bring him down. Uh, what's cool is we're actually going to go over, after I show you guys the sound, I'm going to go over some of the stuff I chose. I can tell you where this 808 is if you want to have a good 808. I think it's a great one. Um, I'll, I'll show you all that stuff. I did some, some interesting things here. So let's get into processing this guy now that we got our pitch sounding pretty good. Let's listen to it. <laughs> This one is the weird one. That one might be a little weird. I could probably dial it in more, but. Do you think they like resample it? Like when they do it? Yeah, no, I, I definitely do. I definitely think they resample it and they just, they, they tune it that way. I mean, do is it, that like cheating or? No. Like, what do you think? I think everybody, I think everybody does it, but it's just like, I tried to do it in MIDI so that I could explain it a lot easier. If I had done it in audio, it would be, it would probably be closer. Um, I think it's still pretty close for what it is but there's just more control in audio. If I was to just take this guy, let's just do it, whatever, we'll do it for fun, and I'm making an audio track. We're live, so we're just gonna go ahead and just do what we want, and we're gonna go ahead and arm that track. I'm gonna solo this guy, and I'm just gonna just go, all right, cool, let's resample this, starting here, and hit record. Cool, so now I have audio. So now I can take this audio, solo it, right? It's super quiet, let's bring this guy up a little bit. I can take this guy, I can start messing with some like some warping stuff, right? Like I put it 16th or something, and put this uh, this guy over, just to kind of, and then pull this this guy down. And then they yeah. could like take something like um, like a phaser or something, whatever. Let's let's pretend we're just going off, see what happens. Get some weird sounds, and I could I could bounce that again, and I could be like, all right, cool, that's cool. I like the phaser on there now. Uh, I'm gonna go into envelope mode and I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna put this guy now, or let's say I like consolidate him. So I, I like, let's say I like that rhythm, even though I don't really. Uh, I consolidate him now. It's it's. Um, I can start messing with this in complex pro mode and start messing with the pitch. So I could just go. All right, cool. I'm gonna mess with the complex pro. Take down some of the formats in the envelope. Um, hit this guy over. 
select transpose, even grain, like grain gets you some weird stuff. So now I can go like. So let's say that's like a cool phrase. So I could be like, okay, duplicate that. So now I can get even more crazy stuff pitch bending. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it's awesome. That's why it's not cheating. It's just it's just being a different way of being creative. I know Mr. Bill does that a lot, dude. Yeah, Mr. Bill's crazy, dude. He's got that big he's ass. Such a beast. He's got that Australian hair. Uh, he's got dude. that beautiful nose ring. Beautiful nose ring. Beautiful nose ring. It's like 24 carats, right? 24 carats. <laughs> it's like a bone, isn't it? I don't know. It's probably a. He's the bo He's the fastest dude ever. I wish. He's just. He has a better keyboard than us, too. Yeah, too. I like the way this one sounds, though. All right, let's process this guy. So, Parker, I'm going to teach you how to process. First thing we want to do is not hit tab, uh, is we're going to go and get an EQ and cut out some of those. You can see right away. Look how much stuff we don't need. Look at all this crap right here. We don't need that. A ton of stuff down there. A ton of BS. So I'm going to cut the lows. It's a really high-pitched sound, so it really can just be like right around here. I'm gonna change the curve to a little bit more. Uh, that really cleans it up. Yeah, exactly. Especially it's gonna make room for our kick. I probably should go back and, and mess with some of the pitching, but I'm not gonna do that right now. We're just gonna keep it the way it is. Uh, next thing is OTT. This is what really also, another thing, remember how you were saying with Serum, I did a double OTT? Yeah. Um, Multi-band OTT. Um, I think I had this at like 83%, and I pulled this guy up to bring out the top end, like, a lot. And then I pulled out some of the mids, too. And a little bit of low. You can already hear. It's just not as loud. Can so, you do that within uh, Serum's multiband? Can you pull up yeah, like, actually, the different that's bands? Like, of, I, I didn't uh, know that, actually. The highs you, and the mids and stuff? Yeah, like, you can you can start going here, and you can start pulling these guys up. I don't like to do it that much, because I usually do it here. I don't know why. It's just, like, my process. But, yeah, if you want to if you want to mess with the highs and the mids and lows, you that's can do cool. that. I didn't know that. I know this was, like, part of the new update, the mix knob, which is awesome. If I usually leave that thing all the way up anyway. This guy, I'll, I'll pull down a little bit more. So now it's like, it's sounding really good. But it's still not loud enough uh, and it's still not present enough. So I'm gonna go to my go-to saturator, turn on soft clip, and then we're gonna take this drive up to like, say four. Now it's sounding fat. Again, I've said this before, the soft clip acts as like a limiter um, which is really great. Uh, I put it a lot on my buses too, because it kind of controls everything, and then I can get everything really loud. Right now we got our master at minus three. Don't judge us, um, but we had to do that for the filming. So sick. Now you got your own very. You can take it and and uh, your own very own boombox cartel sound. Uh, it sounds a lot like Quicks, but it's like a little bit different too, because they're kind of like. I don't know. There's just like more whiny and bagpipey, I guess. Who's the uh, who's the chick from uh, X Men who like absorbs other like people's powers? Is it? Um, Are you talking about the blue one? Yeah. Or no, she like touches people and she like gets the X Men power. No, I don't remember. It's just like Will. Ian. Yeah. Who's the X Men chick with the powers that touches people? Rogue. Rogue. Look Rogue. at see? Yeah. That's why Ian's the man. Dude, I think that's what they do, man. They just, you know, work with artists and then they touch them and just and absorb, absorb absorb the, the sound. power. Exactly. Well, I don't know. I, they they well see they had what was that one song that was like super mm, mm, mm. I don't know. It's not really good. The one with Quicks? No, no. Was it the Quicks? Their the, very first one they got like really big on. Oh no, that was uh that uh, sound was B2, like B two U. Yeah, whatever it is, you know what it is. It well. But that's the one that that sound is like very, very, very open and very wide, and they like everybody played it all the time because it was just like a cool drop. It was like super slow. Um, I was like listening to. I like this. I wish um, we might come back and redo this this uh, 
If we would have done the second drop, it would probably been easier. But we want to do the harder one for you guys because we can. Um, so I'm going to go over right now some of the techniques I used to get our stuff to sound like theirs. Um, we're going to listen to theirs again real quick so you can hear their drop. So you can hear ours. The pitching's a little off on this one, so I'm gonna turn this one off, but you get it. That's because of the pitch bend, but regardless, it's the same thing. If I take this guy, or so I take this guy. So you can kinda, um, you can kinda see it's the same sound, but I think something's going on with the pitching, but whatever. Um, and you can get creative with it. So what I did was, uh, before when I started, I started listening to theirs and I was really trying to, f the first thing I did was like, all right, lay out their pick, their kick pattern. Great idea too, to help you when you're writing your drops. If you write a drum, um, if you write it like a drum part first, um, or even use somebody's to inspire you. I'm not saying copy it, but even use it because most drum beats are all the same anyway. Uh, it's like the stuff in the middle, the, the 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 spice, you know what I mean, and is what really makes it uh, that groove, which you can add your own. But a lot of times the kick and snare are always the same, but a little different. So what I did is I was like, okay, cool. Let me listen to this 808, right? So let's listen to it. It's really coming through the speaker. So what I did is I found this sample. I'll tell you where it is if you don't already have it. It's uh, Loud Pucks sample uh spv 808 uh 8084 right i think it was in his uh yeah his uh, sound packs as the ones that make them and it was um i think you could buy it i think it's on splice too um but this 808 it, it's i swear it has to be the same one i don't know maybe you think i'm wrong but i edited it a little bit so what i did is you can see there's nothing on it just solo it. I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully you can hear it in headphones or through speakers. But uh, what I did first was I took this guy and if I take out, I'll show you the fades. There's an actual like top kick right here that's layered in. What I did is I faded it to right here. So I did my own side chaining essentially so that I could take, I didn't really like the way that the, the top kick was coming through. So what I did is I actually cut it out, and I'll show you how I did that. I just took this, and actually, where was that? Right there. So let's say we take from here over, right? I'm going to just hit Command-E, cut that guy. Now I have their top kick. And then I got this guy, right? So what I did now is I take this guy, and I'll set him aside, and let's say I'll just conjoin him, into, consolidate him into one piece. And then I'm gonna take this guy, stretch him back out, and I'm gonna go put it to where about where, where the kick was, which I think was like right there. Right, where's it going? So now it's gonna gel really nice. So what I did with this guy is I used my favorite little thing called impulse. I'm gonna zoom out real quick because we gotta do this so you can see. So here's our kick here, our sub. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, our top kick, and then here's our kick here. So this guy is an impulse. You can see it's right here. I'm gonna solo him so you can hear him. Oops, just kidding. Oh, the headphones need to be on. Are these headphones, by the way? Questions, comments, concerns? I feel like these are headphones. Yeah, they have to be headphones. Right? Like For headphones, sure. like you can listen to them. Or it's like a power button or something. It's like the garage band solo, yeah. you know? So, I don't know. Anyway, impulse, right? Take this guy that we just consolidated right here and we'll drag him into impulse. I already have one here right now. So now when we hit it, it makes it a little bit louder. I can change the decay, which is what I did on this one. I changed the decay, uh, turned down the volume a little bit. Now I have their kick. Now the, the cool thing too is I can raise the volume of it because it wasn't poking through enough and I really wanted it to be really strong and hard. Um, so what I did is I just added more volume. So now their top kick comes out and it's side chained very nicely with the 808. You can hear it. We'll, Let's delete this guy now that we don't need him. We put him in there. So it's like the perfect side chain. I've been doing that a lot lately, at least with the 808s where I'm going to just fade him in because the Ableton compressor 
and I don't know, I, I'm sure I could use another compressor for whatever reason. I Whenever I try to dial it in, it gives you that click because you want a fast attack, and I hate that click. This is a lot way, uh, a lot cleaner way of doing uh, your side chaining with your 808s. Uh, and I've, I've just been having a lot more control with it, so I just take the time and do it. Uh, another thing you can do, too, is if you like the way it is, I can take this and put it in a sampler and take warping off, so that way it's already side chained for me if you want to work with MIDI. That's another thing I do sometimes. For this one, I just did it. Um, also, too, with this 808, they have this thing. If you listen close, they have this uh, this this guy, this last one over here, is uh, pitching up a little bit. So I just used my ear, and I just tried to, to match it to theirs. Pitch your 808s. Uh, give them some different flavor. It adds a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's what I did for the 808 and the kick. It's pretty simple. But like I said, it's just being creative. I, I was like, hey, I want this kick to sound louder, and it's not loud enough. So I cut it out, and I made my own, you know, I took it and I put it into impulse to make it louder. Uh, I added some more gain on it, and I sidechain it to blend it really nicely. So it's like you're not always just, like, limited to your whatever samples that you have. Yeah. Um, you can make them and, and sound design them to be what you want. Sound designing is not just, like, working in serum, you know what I mean? I never thought about just, you know, cutting the beginning off the transient and uh, yeah. putting it into the impulse. Well, like you hear kicks sometimes too. It's like another thing we did, and I'll show you. By the way, we're using the uh, excellent snare from our Helix Goodies pack. If you didn't already download it, um, we'll add another link for this too, if yeah. you want the snare. Yeah, we'll share. It sounded just like it. Uh, I, I did some more editing. Again, this is just helping my sound designing every time I do it. It's very. It's our Sean Wasabi snare, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, excellent Wasabi snare. Um, there, his, uh, sorry, Boombox Cartel. I'm gonna move this guy over so we can just kind of be in the same ballpark of where we're working. Uh, Boombox Cartel snare is super. Actually, that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted this guy to be. This is the first snare, so this guy needs to be here. See, it's very. I don't know, it's, it's like very slappy. So I found a slappy snare, our snare, uh, and I took it, and I was still having some uh, some issues with it. I'll open it up for you, I'll show you the original. It actually sounds like this. So there's a lot of reverb. So what I did with this guy, um, I'm gonna go ahead and make an audio track, is I took him, I dragged him out into the project. Let's solo him real quick. So it was too long. And it wasn't working, like I tried to put it in just like that, it wasn't working. So what I did is I shortened it by using the warp thing. I've been doing this a lot lately, and this is a great little trick just to get uh, samples to be what you want them to. This cuts it in half, or you could slow it down. Like you can get crazy sounds like if it's in, well, this was in complex mode. I've been doing that a lot lately. It's a complex sound, dude. And then I made it, like you can turn it down to, I'm getting sidetracked, but. That's my little trick. Don't tell anybody I showed you that. Um, so let's go back to where we were. But I want to be in beats mode for this. Cool. So it was still, it was still doing, it was pretty good, but it wasn't great. So what I did was I consolidated it, Command J, and I added a fade to make it a little shorter. I wanted the reverb, but I wanted it like really short. You know what I'm saying? So once I had it the way I wanted it, cool. I hit Command J, bam, um, and then I think I pitched it too, to match the sound. Let's hear if I solo this guy. Yes, it's a little higher pitch. So what I did in this case is I'll show you. I'm gonna take this guy now. I could just drag him onto a MIDI track, or I can open up a simpler or sampler, drag it right in. Cool. So now we got our new snare that we just made, which is the same thing, but so now you can hear it. But see, the, the, the pitch isn't right, so I'm going to transpose it, I think, up three. See, that's going to, eh, that little thing, I would take off uh, warp mode. There we go. Now, the other thing that we were having an issue with was this snare was, it's a really great snare. And even though, like, we made it here at Excellent, it's it's like every, every project's different, so you got to do different stuff sometimes. Uh, this was a Ian trick, my boy Ease, not paying attention, just staring at the screen. E EJ. EJ. What's up, bro? We're talking about you, dude. 
I'm talking about your compression tricks. The only one who knows how to use a compressor is Ian. And I still don't. Just kidding. <laughs> Nobody knows how to use a compressor. So what we did is we took just the beginning sound, just the beginning transient to make it, because it wasn't coming through enough. It's, I don't know, you can hear it. It's just like a little blip, right? So this little blip we took right here, um, and we just took the, uh, if I take this guy, I'll, I'll drag him out so you can hear it. It's the sample, the same sample. But we just shorten it just for the, the beginning transient. And then what we did with that is we added uh, the UAD SPL uh, transient designer. This thing just like, what, does it crush things? It just insanely compresses them. Yeah, it kills. Yeah, so it's 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 really good at just just crushing your sounds. I use it a lot sometimes if I want my transient to really come out. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just turn the attack way up. But I won't. It'll like clip like a mother. But um, I'll it's just nice take some blend. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we did is we blended it. I compressed it a little bit to pull out the top a little bit more. Uh, again, saturator just to control the levels. Um, and what this does is it just it doesn't sound like it's doing much, but it does. Let's unmute it. Just see that little extra click right there? Again, I sound designed my own thing to make it what I needed it to be because I really wanted it to cut through. Um, the other thing that I could show you what we did is actually no, that's pretty much it. We also did this uh, this little marching snare thing they had there. Just listen to it in detail to be able to hear. Uh, what they're doing. Oh, this was kind of cool. So there was like this little fill here. It was like a record thing. Um, and they have this, I guess. It's kind of hard. It's like... So what I did is I just I looked up a scratch sample and I just took it and I just pitched and I just did the same exact thing. I just completely stretched it out. Uh, and, I, and, and what I did, like for instance, I'll show you here if this was warped. I just stretched it out, just kept stretching it and stretching it. And what that did was give me the um, the sound that I wanted. Um, I just kept going until I got it to that low, that just pitched it, stretched it so much to where it was just, it gave it like a cool little texture, so. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's pretty much it as far as what we did. Um, we're gonna go ahead and like I said, we're gonna put a download link if you wanna download the sound. Again, get creative with it. Um, in order to, if you really want to get it like close like them, you really got to dial in the pitch bend. The sound is, is, is dead on. Like this guy sounds just like it. And you can make whatever you want out of it. You can mess with our, our preset, make it something cooler. I hope you do. Um, we're going to provide that in the description on Facebook. Uh, we're going to be doing a YouTube tutorial on this guy, just going right through it, just uh, not going through all the other jargon. We might also do this sound in there too. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys learned something. Um, make sure you like, share, subscribe to all of our um, all of our channels, at Excellent Sound. Yeah, Kenny, bring, bring it up on the Yeah, Kenny, will screen. you bring it up? Oh, cool. Kenny's got it up right now. That is our Facebook. We are growing rapidly. There's pictures of Parker and Ian. No pictures of me, unfortunately. Oh, I'm some of those. very upset. I need some of those. Uh, pull up the picture of my, pull up the thumbnail of me. Thank you. That's me. Um, I look yes, beautiful. Dude. That is just uh, so, yeah. Amazing. This guy's going to go up uh, hopefully soon. We're going to try to get it up on YouTube right away um, and be able to just do, like, if you want to have, like, a little bit more. <laughs> It's me tripping on acid, I guess. That look cool. Uh, we're going to do like a more like formal tutorial um, that's just like a little bit more focused. We're going to edit it. We just wanted to come hang out here at the studio like we always do. Vape some clouds, bro. Uh, make clouds some beats. Vapes. Hopefully you guys, uh, you guys had a good time hanging out with us. We're going to do another live stream. I think if you, have any, um, if you have any ideas for live streams, we have some ourselves. We have some requests to make some sounds, so we're going to try to get to those, too, if we can. Um, but if you want to see me in the studio working on something, or Parker working on something, or Ian doing nothing, um, just being handsome, or Kenny G, uh, I don't know, just doing whatever Kenny G does on the AV side, 
Uh, playing saxophone. Playing yeah, saxophone. Of course, the clarinet. What is, doesn't Kenny G play the clarinet? No, he, he plays, plays the, that uh, little that that clarinet the bassoon. Sax of, is it bassoon? bassoon. Yeah, that thing's dope. <laughs> I see. I'm gonna put a bassoon in my track. <laughs> it's so tight. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, let us know if you guys want to. Uh, you guys want to see us doing that? We're gonna be doing more stuff too, like uh, reviews. Uh, we're gonna release a our own. Uh, it's in the works. We're gonna release our own serum preset pack. That's gonna be insane. We got a couple of great sound designers working on it right now including myself, Parker, Ian. Uh, we're going to be making uh, more samples to give away. Uh, hopefully we'll do some of that real soon for you guys so that you guys can, um, you know, start using our stuff. We're going to have some special guests. Oh, yeah, we're going to have some special guests. Uh, we'll do some interviews. Uh, we have some friends, so if uh, we'll, we'll let you guys know when we have somebody. And if you have any questions, you can send them over to us um, because we're going to try to get them in here and, and, and get some... Uh, some real, some real production questions that uh, people have about people's processes, how how they get creative, all that type of stuff. So, um, yeah, thanks again. Uh, did I did I I had everything right? Yeah, right. I think that's. I think that's Should we it. go out with the banger? Let's go out with a banger. Ian, are you gonna come in here and dance for us? Are you gonna dance right there? Okay. You are gonna dab in the background? All right. Should I do it from the beginning or should I do it from the drop? Our version or theirs? Let's get the let's get the drop, man. Let's do our version and then. From the build? Yeah. Let's All right. Do it. Let's let's go out with a bang, let's, boys. Let's ride it out.